We'll continue with AI. Our next guest says there will be an explosion of humanoid AI robotics in 2026. Sandbox AQ CEO Jack Kittery joins us now on the cutting edge of, of both quantum and AI. Jack, it's Happy New Year. It's always good to have you. So, so happy, what is happy your New prediction Sarah, here? Happy New Year, David. Good to Thank see you. Thank you, Jack. Good to see you. What, what are you predicting here when it comes to our robotic future? Well, 2026 is going to be an explosive year for AI. Uh, first, we're going to hit see robots hit us in many, many different ways and get on the radar of a lot of investors. Let's start, first of all, with robocars. Uh, Waymo, we already see the success. Waymo just announced 450,000 paid rides a week. Uh, we expect Tesla to try to get to similar numbers by mid to end year. Tesla right now only has 130 uh, robo taxis on the road. Waymo has 2,500 cars on the road. Expect to see Tesla match Waymo's numbers over the next three, four quarters. And I think Waymo will reach a million rides, paid rides a week by Q3 of this year. So a prediction for you all on that. So that's one kind of robot. We have to really relook at Tesla as a robotics company, not as a car manufacturer. And the discussion today that people have about how many cars did Tesla sell is actually irrelevant to the future of Tesla. We have to relook at this as a robotics company. So robo-taxi, robot cars is one aspect. Look at Waymo, look at Tesla robo-taxis. Now let's look at humanoid robots. Uh, if we look at Optimus, if we look at Figure AI on the private side, if we look at the Chinese companies, your colleague was just talking about various uh, companies in China and South Korea. Unitree is an example of a Chinese robotics company. You're going to start seeing robots hit big in B2B first before consumer. The B2B areas that I'm predicting, Sarah and David, are one, logistics and warehouses. If you look at Amazon, Amazon has over a million non-humanoid robots today, right now in their warehouses. They're going to announce this year their use of humanoid robots that will start rolling out this year, next year, and the year after as this scales. And so expect to see hundreds of thousands eventually of these humanoid robots in the logistics and supply chain area. Also expect to see robots, there's already tests happening in hospitals around the U.S. right now, not replacing doctors and nurses. Don't worry, robots are not coming into the surgical theater, but they are doing the basic tasks around the hospital of linens, towels, food, uh, sanitizing uh, with UV, the rooms to get rid of MRSA, MRSA, which is a horrible pathogen that kills 100,000 people a year. Robots are better at that job than mm -hmm. humans can do. And so we're going to start seeing robots begin to enter the radar this year and start to scale in the two years after that. Wait, um, Jack, who's making, you know, Optimus, obviously, he's talking about still a number of years from now to really have his supply chain going and, and producing them. So where are they coming from, these robots that you're discussing right now that are going to be deployed conceivably in 2026, these humanoid robots, I mean? In 2026, uh, David, we're going to start seeing these prototype and test prototype use cases in these various areas I mentioned. So it's not going to be at scale yet, but it's going to start hitting the radar. And I still will, I think we'll start to change the people's minds about how they view companies like Tesla and others. My prediction is a doubling of Tesla's stock over the next 24 to 36 months, simply because people are not looking at Tesla the right way right now. Um, China will have a mass production of robots starting actually in the second half of this year, moving into 27, 28. You're already seeing Unitree and others start to move to mass production. Uh, and that'll happen by end of this year, moving to 27, 28. The question will now be geopolitically how we handle the influx of Chinese robots. We're already seeing what BYD is doing on the car front in Europe. BYD is not used here in the U.S. So this is going to be an interesting geopolitical question in addition to an investing question. But robo-taxis is going to scale this year, and you're going to see both Waymo scale to a million paid rides a week, I believe, and you'll see Tesla begin to catch up to Waymo and deploy thousands of cars. Let's remember, there's more than 8 million, 8 million, I think they just hit 9 million Teslas on the road today. So that's a lot of cars they can start to deploy either directly as Tesla or convince owners to deploy them as robo-taxis to make X dollars. 
I mean, it's exciting. I think it's exciting what you're talking about. But what you're getting at overall is just the uh, the adoption of AI by enterprise, which is one of the biggest questions, I think, for the market um, and whether these high valuations and all the investment is going to ultimately be worth it. What, what what do you see a lot? I mean, you work with so many different sectors from financials to pharmaceuticals, which I think there's a lot of promise in AI, but I'm not sure how quickly there's been adoption. Well, it's a great question. J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference is coming up uh, Jan 12 to 15, coming up in the next two weeks. Uh, we'll have to see what announcements come there. But I think that in biotech and pharma, we're seeing a handful of companies like Lilly forge ahead with AI, and you could see the valuation of Lilly uh, pulling apart, pulling ahead of its competitors. But you see a lot of other pharma taking its time with using AI for the real world. So I would distinguish, Sarah and David, AI for the digital world is large language models, and that's great. AI for the real world is actually using AI to make a drug. Every pharma company is using digital AI right now to make some more productivity in their documents and things like that. The question for 26, 27 is, are we going to start more, see more companies like Lilly uh, that are now using AI in a deeper, more fundamental way? And I think when you look at NVIDIA, when you look at Google uh, for Gemini, you're starting to see this trend. When you look at applications for NVIDIA chips, initially, of course, it was consumer-led in terms of the chip usage in large data centers for consumer, $20 a month, ChatGPT, Gemini, XAI, and others. We're starting to see from NVIDIA, and I think NVIDIA, by the way, is just getting going, so people have uh, questions on that, happy to answer those. I think NVIDIA yeah. has a lot of upside because we're just starting to see AI for the real world kicking in with NVIDIA chips, as well as with Google's TPUs on top of that. All right, a lot of stock picks from Jack this morning, loving <laughs> Tesla and NVIDIA. Let me end on China, though, because you raised it, obviously, in some of the comments you just made. You know, we're in competition with them in AI, in robotics, in quantum, which I know, Jack, you also monitor closely in terms of the advances there. I mean, how do you see it more broadly given they are not considered to be an ally of the United States? Well, I think that's absolutely correct. But what China's doing right now, it's actually in a way helping the overall market because it's demonstrating at scale what can be done. The robotics market, for example, uh, will help Optimus and Figure AI and other private companies right now in the U.S. because China's going to scale first in robotics and will demonstrate that in their own factories, in their own hospitals, and that demonstration will spur more innovation here in the U.S. And so I think that's going to be interesting. On the quantum side, there's a number of public quantum companies right now. Uh, and we're going to see, I think, adoption of quantum starting over the next four or five years. That will not be a 26 story or a 27 story. But I, I think Quantinuum probably will go public in the next 18 months, joining IonQ, Rigetti, and others in the quantum space. I think that with SpaceX's IPO, and if you look at figure.ai, which is a private company today uh, and just raised a billion dollars, we're starting to see private capital mobilize in a very significant way. The good news, David and Sarah, is that you don't have to be a public company now to raise significant dollars. So we can see these moves happen even without hitting the IPO market. If I could just finish, though, on cyber, I want to make a prediction on that. Anthropic announced on November 13th of this past year now that there were 30 companies using Anthropic's Claude that got hacked or attempted to get hacked by third-party hackers, specifically China-based state actors, David, to your point about China. And I think that every CEO listening to this broadcast today, the number one thing on their agenda is not only using AI, but protecting their companies in that use of AI, because that's a new vector of vulnerability and attack by hackers, including the state actors in China and other countries. So that's one thing I do want to note, that we had a little taste of that in November. We're going to see a lot more of that in 26. What about Sandbox AQ? Speaking of raising money and staying private, what are your plans? Well, thank God we did a great raise uh, last year. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in our company, but we're really focused right now on the customers. It's been great to work with fantastic customers across major B2B sectors. We also announced uh, on your show, Sarah, 
our uh, deal with the Pentagon, protecting the Pentagon with an AI-driven cyber product. Uh, it's very important right now to look at not only industry, but also as defense meets tech. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot happening with Sandbox AQ, with Anduril, with Palantir, with a number of companies in 26. We're going to see a lot of activity as the Pentagon and the tech world start working together in an even more synergistic fashion. And I think also now that you see Europe, uh, Sarah and David, upping their GDP percentage on defense, we're going to start seeing that happen in Europe and, I should mention, in the Gulf states as well. All right. Well, a uh, good place for you guys to be um, working with the Defense Department. Jack, thank you very much. We'll hold you to your predictions, of course, as always. We'll check in. Okay. Jack Ettery. Take care. Happy uh, New Year. Sam Doc, thank you. Happy New Year.